Hello, my loves, it's me, Jazzy Mac, and today I have multiple opportunities for you all, and I have really good news. If you've ever worked in a customer service, maybe you worked in child services, daycare services, I don't know, you worked as a school teacher, these roles are going to be perfect for you all. So let's hop right into the first role. And of course, we're going to do the resume demonstration and we'll talk about the salary. Uh, we'll do a breakdown of the job description all that good stuff. So let me show you the first role. And that's going to be this one. Now, they're looking for somebody to work on the trust and safety team in the self-harm division. Now, if you've never heard of Discord, Discord is like kind of like a social media platform, but a lot of people use it for like gaming, um, you know, like art communities. They use it for like trading groups. So it's a lot of people that just hang out on there and sometimes do like, you know, uh, like hosting little hangouts and talks and stuff of that nature. So they're saying that at the heart of Discord's community is safety and they want to make sure that there's no platform abuse happening and they want to minimize exposure to spam. So minimizing exposure to spam is like, you know, in a way making sure that there are no like chat bots that are just leaving a bunch of spam comments, asking people like for their, you know, cash app or their bank account information. Um, and of course, platform abuse could fall under the umbrella of making sure that people aren't like threatening other people, you know, um, you know, trying to do harm to other people, like cyberbullying, um, harassment, all of that is like considered abuse. So they're basically looking for someone to join the self-harm team um, and, you know, have some meaningful understanding in the abuse space. And the reason why I said this is great for teachers and people that work at like the YMCA is because your primary job as a teacher is to make sure that your children are not being abused, that they're not abusing each other um, and that they are safe and protected. So again, the safety team um, is there to limit any, any, you know, like bad behavior on the platform. So you're going to protect and serve the community um, by managing and scaling the self-harm operations team. You know, this is make sure that people aren't talking about hurting themselves on the platform because, yeah, the platform could be sued if somebody hurt themselves and like they, you know, didn't like intervene or like flag the comment and things of that nature. So what's really cool about this role is you don't have to be like an expert in trust and safety. You're going to work with people. Um, from the policy team or from the product team um, to develop, you know, operational policies, tools, and solutions. So you don't have to be an expert. There's a bunch of help. There's a bunch of people you're going to be able to lean on uh, to be successful in this role. Now, you all know how I feel about these basic qualifications that ask for a bachelor's degree. Listen, I got my first six-figure job before I was fully done with college, okay? Working in tech. Most of my managers do not have bachelor's degrees. Some of them like got an associate's at the most. Many of them did not even have a bachelor's. Okay. That is a nice to have. It is just a way to filter out candidates in hopes of finding this, you know, amazing candidate. But sometimes this is just, this is what a gatekeeper would put. It's not a hard requirement. So Experience in self-harm, at-risk youth, or online child safety space. Again, this is going to be great for if you've ever ran a daycare. Maybe you worked on college and you were responsible for making sure that there was no bullying happening no bullying happening on campus. You know, anything that you were responsible for doing as far as making sure that people weren't putting mean comments on social media um, on campus or anything like that. Um, making sure that the children in the daycare were protected or making sure, you know, that they were not on uh, harmful websites or, you know, websites with graphic content, you know, so overseeing the child's safety. Um, so a lot of you that have worked in like child protective services or you've worked as like a social worker, again, at risk youth, this is going to be experience that is relevant to you. Um, and they're just saying, you know, we want you to have 
some good people skills, you know, be analytical and be a great communicator, right? So for these roles, they pay really well. The minimum in New York is 130,000 per year and the minimum in Colorado is 104,000. Please do not leave a comment and say, oh, I don't live in Colorado, so I don't qualify for this job. These are like federal transparency laws that state if a company has any employees in these locations, they have to disclose the salary on the job description. Again, this is a fully remote role that you can work in anywhere in the US or you could work locally in San Francisco. So please don't ask me this question about can you work here? This is only a transparency law thing that applies to these two states. Um, you can still work anywhere in the US for this. So. 104,000 a year is pretty darn good, it's like 52 or $53 per hour um, minimum. But I would hope that you would at least ask for 140,000 per year and meet somewhere in between, you know, high 120, maybe 130 range, um, plus your equity and benefits. So let's go ahead and look at the resume breakdown. Um, or you know what, I wanna look at the next role. Let's just look at the next role first. Now, the next role is going to be good for anyone that has worked in event management, uh, project management, customer support, um, or if maybe you've worked in like learning and development um, or any type of data analytics. Uh, this is going to be your job, you know, data entry, that type of stuff. So it says they're looking for a recruiting analyst. And I want to be clear, a recruiting analyst is not a recruiter. So if you don't have recruiting experience, that is okay because you're not looking for a recruiter. The analyst is going to be kind of more behind the scenes. They're going to be more like analytical, you know, in the background. But they're saying they want you to gather recruiting data um, analytics and they want you to help improve the candidate experience and the hiring process and inclusion and diversity. So what that sounds like to me is they're asking you to maybe like a lot of companies will send out surveys to people that they've interviewed before, that they've hired and that they have not hired. And they'll say, hey, what was it like applying for this job? How was your candidate experience? Was your recruiter nice to you? You know, were the people on the, the hiring panel Panel nice to you. And so you take that data and compile it and say, okay, 75% of our people had a great experience, but these 25% said they hated our candidate experience or they hated our hiring process. So you would gather data kind of in relation to that. Um, you're going to work with a couple of different types of teams. You'll work with like people managers. Um, you may uh, work kind of like with project managers. Um, a program manager is just somebody that manages projects. So again, there is a lot of help and support, you know, in this team, it says that you're going to work cross-functionally. So you won't be there alone. You're going to have, you know, several different people that you're going to work with, including the talent team, um, to help understand what that data or what those surveys ultimately mean and what type of action the organization is going to take to make sure that in the future, um, people that apply for the jobs have a better experience and they have a better onboarding experience. So if you're like a people person and you like to make you know people happy and figure out ways to like make something a better experience, this is totally for you. So all of you customer service people, this is stuff that you pretty much do already. Um, so this is, is something that you would probably really enjoy. ATS experience is applicant tracking system. And again, when we talk about hot words on the resume, your resume is uploaded to the applicant tracking system, which is kind of like this digital file cabinet that recruiters use and recruiters will punch in a few different words, uh, keywords, and that applicant tracking system will bring back the resumes that have those keywords. So that's why it's so it's important to have those hot words on your resume that we always talk about. So if you've got experience in Excel, Google Sheets, that's gonna be a plus for you. Obviously, everybody has experience dealing with confidential data, okay? Workday, uh, pretty simple to understand. You know, it's just what employees use to like put in their information about 
the number of dependents they have and stuff like that. Um, but the minimum salary in New York is 133 and the minimum salary for Colorado is 106. If you live in other geographical locations, uh, such as like Atlanta, Atlanta would be kind of close to like what Colorado would get. But if I were offered this job, I would definitely be asking for probably 130,000 and, you know, we would just have to negotiate and hopefully get down to like 120, like minimum. Um, again, this is the minimum they can offer you, but they would probably offer you, you know, a lot higher than this. So let's take a peek at the resumes. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is my resume? Okay, so our resume is going to, we'll look at the first opportunity for trust and safety, right? So for this one, some of the words that we want to make sure are in the resume um, would obviously be like, trust and safety because that's what the job that was the team that the job was about um and of course discord is a hot word but let's say you were a movie theater manager and you're like how can i incorporate that experience um into this and position myself as like somebody that could lead a trust and safety team well pretty sure you had to monitor um, you know, children, underage children, making sure they were not sneaking into the movie theater. Um, I am sure that you had to maybe handle some abuse, um, alerts that might have come from people, you know, claiming that their credit card was stolen or, you know, claiming that um, somebody use their account without their information, I mean, without their permission to use it. So those are some of the things that, you know, people with like, you know, retail experience could use to translate into this role. But let's also say that you worked at a daycare. Maybe you had to maintain a safe and therapeutic environment for children. Uh, you had to do training to prevent self-harm incidents. Maybe you trained the people that work for you. Uh, maybe you work to advocate for inclusion of children of all abilities and levels of comprehension. Um, you made it mandatory for your staff to be trained in internet safety and computer safety and cyberbullying. All of this works perfectly in conjunction with, you know, uh, this particular role. So if we look at the other resume, if you were going to do the recruiting analyst particular role, then you may say, well, Jazzy, I just worked as an event coordinator. All I did was, you know, plan uh, social gatherings for my campus, for my college. Well, the way that you could use that is you absolutely had to interview food vendors. You had to be a great communicator. You had to work with recruiters and program managers and HR on campus to approve, you know, print designs created for events. So again, Hot words that we want to add to our resume are going to be working with the talent team, you know, hiring process and candidate experience. All of that is stuff that we're saying we're really enthusiastic about in this whole process. We're not saying that we have done all of these things. We're just we're saying we're excited to collaborate with the team to do these things and to improve the company goals. Um, so, yeah, some of the other hot words that you could use. Um, obviously, it's applicant tracking system. That's something you could watch a YouTube video on or Udemy course, um, social recruiting, um, of course, customer support, project management. All of those are going to be really hot words. So again, the templates are going to be down below in the description box as they always are. And I hope you all apply for this job. Please don't wait because a lot of you will say, Jazzy, I saw the job and I thought I was going to just come back to it the next day and then it was gone and I don't know what happened. Well, what happened is that you waited or you waited until the next day to get the resume template and, you know, submit it. Like, so don't be that guy or that girl. Okay. So let me know if you all have any questions, but until the next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.